So Tim, you thought of this technique for acoustic purposes and then you realised it could be used for other things as well. That's right. We've seen how in the, uh, in the sea, the use of these two pulses, a plus one and a minus one, can be used to hide the bubbles mm -hmm. and see other targets like the seabed because uh, the bubbles scatter the square of the numbers and the seabed scatters just the numbers themselves. Right. But the equations looked uh, like they would be applied to any, could be applied to any radiation. So the next obvious step would be use in radar to detect uh, things like this. This is that? for radar, which is an electromagnetic uh, transverse wave, mm -hmm. as opposed to the sonar, which is a, an acoustic wave, a longitudinal acoustic wave. Uh, for the uh, radar, this is the equivalent of the bubble. It's yeah. a small piece of circuitry, very important, um, such as you might find in, in bugging devices, for example. And here we could uh, use the same principle of two pulses, mm -hmm. plus one and a minus one, to, uh, to detect these, because these are the ones that scatter the, uh, the square of the pulse that, that hits them. So, for so this is what you've got written down, that's right, down here. That's right. So we have that if you square a 1 and you add it to the square of minus 1, you get, two. you get 2. So in this case, addition is used to detect this. And then you can double check that you detected it, because if you subtract the squares of the right. same signals that we affected that, you get 0. So addition here makes the circuit appear, subtraction makes it disappear, which is the opposite to what we did when we were trying to hide the bubbles, mm -hmm. because this, like the bubbles, scattered in the square of the amplitude. So you had this idea, and then yeah. you had to test it out. That's right. So um, I uh, contacted my good friend, Professor Hugh Griffith, and Dr. Uh, Kenneth Tong here at University College London, uh, because they have uh, all sorts of radar equipment, and we decided to uh, make an experiment to see if indeed we could detect this. But for practical purposes, it's not just good enough to detect this. Right. Because if you're going around, say for example, you're sweeping an area for bugs, mm -hmm. uh, listening devices, and uh, it's not just good enough to be able to detect them. You've also got to uh, know when you've detected another piece of metal that isn't a bug. Otherwise, you'd never get finished sweeping a room because you'd be stopping at every piece of metal. So you want to distinguish between something which has circuitry in it and That's something right. which is just a lump of metal. Just a lump of metal. So for example, we can use the same uh, two pulses to do that, because if we look at just straightforward metal, that doesn't scatter the square of the number, it scatters the number itself. So when we add, we get one plus minus one is zero, whereas in the adding, addition of the two pulses with the circuitry, it's very strong. And again, when we uh, subtract, the circuitry becomes invisible, but the straightforward metal whatever it is in the hidden in the wall or, or buried away, that uh, becomes visible. So we distinguish between the two. Here, the signal amplified by the radar system will go into this transmitting antenna. This transmitter will radiate this area of interest. If there's any swing, tricky thing inside, the signal will come back to this receiving antenna, pass the signal to the amplifier. So, so first, uh, we'll do the uh, a kind of standard alarm. So we'll just see what the soil looks like the signal in the, from the soil look like and then we'll put the, 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 the uh, box here inside mm -hmm. and then we will see if it exists or not then we'll sound <laughs> the alarm and now we, we have the soil here and the, the target is not inside so we'll switch on the system and mm -hmm. then collect the data now okay now we switch on the system so I Okay, you can see the signal, so it's collecting the data from the soil as a, as a standard, so it means it, we have nothing there. Now, uh, we have collected one set of data for the background, so uh, we will carry on the second one. Uh, Tim, Helen, please come in. Now, we have just collected the data okay. for the background, the soil. Now, we will bury this under the soil and see if the system can tell us. Okay, so this is uh, a little circuit. It's the kind of circuit of interest that you'd find in a number of uh, devices that we would want to detect. Okay, now let's hide this little circuitry under the soil. Yeah, yeah, and then... So, visually, you can't see anything. So see, it's got the data. Um, now, 
we have done the second experiment. So, uh, Tim, Helen, you can come back now. Now we have done the uh, second set of experiments. So we collect the data, then we process it in the computer, and see what happens. All right, let's have a look. Okay, this is the data that tells us about the soil. This is template, that means it's nothing there. And then, close it, please. And then, this is the routine that we collect data with the the, the, the box with the target. <coughs> I can see it. Um, because uh, the difference, the signal, we see that there's some something interesting under the ground. So it doesn't tell you anything about what it is, it's just something that's returning it the will signal. Be, no, it tells you it's it got that circuitry in there. It tells you it's not just a standard uh, bag of nails or a Coke can or something that's been discarded like that, yeah. a shopping trolley. It's not that, it's something more interesting. I, th I think we can show you if there's an aluminium plate, what happens. How about we get the aluminium target right, this time? Okay, let me click the target. Okay, let's do here. Now this time, I put a piece of aluminium. Oh. So we want Under to the soil. Yeah, yeah, and our system should detect that there's something there, but tell you it's actually just a plain piece of metal. Okay. It's not an interesting thing like the first thing in the boat. Okay. 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 Again, again please. Out. Yeah. Okay. Switch on the system. See, you can see the, the refraction from the from the aluminium is much stronger than the, the uh, from the than the one from the target. So, and then we finish the acquisition. Okay, we have done the third experiment. So, Tim, Helen, please come in and see what happened to this uh, piece of metal. What's the result we get? Okay. Please come this way. Now, this is the signal uh, we receive from the aluminum plate. And you, you can see the difference if your eye is sharp enough. But you can see you can hear that. It doesn't sound no, the alarm. It doesn't sound the buzzer. OK, so you can see, they explain, demonstrate that you can see a little tiny semiconductor device, but you can't see a big piece of aluminum plate. Well, you can see it. But you know that it's it, not the way you, you're looking for. It's not a semiconductor. So you could also do litter detection if you wanted. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm going to dig your plate out yes. just to make sure it's, it's still here. There. Yeah. It's still there. <laughs> it's no <Okay>. magic. <laughs> so we've established that you've built a device that can tell the difference between this and this and nothing at all. And why is that useful? Well, this kind of uh, circuitry is found in a number of interesting objects, uh, covert listening devices. Uh, we know, for example, there was an item in the news where there was a, a bug device hidden in a rock placed in, uh, in, in Russia for many years. Um, but the listening devices um, and covert electronics can be hidden on the body, uh, in walls. And the point is, if you search for it, you want to tell between the difference between this and say uh, just a power cable or something yeah. like that. And so it's, it's useful for that.